Hey, my name's Al, and I hope you're doing awesome. October's almost here, so we're sculpting a pumpkin. Part two, we'll be bringing this into Keyshot. So the very first thing that I use is the grab brush. I typically use grab brush or snake hook brush inside a blender when I start, and we're just starting from a sphere. So with a very large brush size and symmetry turned on, I am just trying to get that basic form of this jack-o'-lantern. The reference is very important, whether it's concept art or a photograph, be sure you get some reference. Now you can see in this example, I broke symmetry really quickly. I did not want a, a symmetrical jack-o'-lantern. I broke symmetry and just playing with those forms, I have that left side kind of angled down. And then using clay strips, I am kind of blocking out where that uh, the, the cutout is on top. Real quickly with draw sharp, I'm gonna get a mouth in there. And then anytime I think uh, things are getting a little too stretched, I can press shift R, change my voxel size, and then control R to remesh. So I use voxel remesh a lot. I hate dyne topo. So using clay strips and then voxel remesh, I've got the mouth kind of blocked in there and continuing to carve out that the cavity for the pumpkin. Now I already have a shot in mind for this. So when I'm sculpting this, you'll notice I don't actually carve too far down into the pumpkin. It wasn't necessary. Same thing, I hardly do any work on the back of the pumpkin because I wasn't gonna do a turntable or anything like that. Using clay buildup and then voxel remesh. So control R, I can pull out, you know, the brow and then holding control, I can carve in for that uh, orbital socket. And I'm being very messy with this because this pumpkin uh, was a little bit rotten, definitely not a fresh pumpkin. Clay build up to beef up the area around the lips. I'll do that for the top and the bottom. And then I'll go through back and forth horizontally to kind of build up those forms that you would see in a pumpkin. Uh, so pumpkins have those, those lines. I don't know what they're called on a pumpkin. Um, just make it more pumpkin-y. And right now I'm using clay strips, but I like to turn the strength up typically in this. Uh, but this worked okay with the default settings. Really wanted to push that smile a little bit, so building up some of those forms. Whenever you smile, you have these smile lines. And then the fat on your cheeks actually compresses here. So keep that in mind. Working on just the idea that this is actually a pumpkin with those striations, things like that. Man, I, I gotta figure out what those are called. Anytime I wanna sharpen up an area to, you know, detail it a little bit more, Make sure it stands out. I love draw sharp for doing that. Holding down shift, I can smooth. By default, the shift is a little too strong for me in Blender, so I like to go to my smooth brush, pick my strength really, really low, about 0.3. That way it doesn't destroy all of my work. Slowly but surely building up some of those forms and then smoothing. Build up the forms and smooth. When things get a little too stretched, that's when I can shift R and then control R for voxel remesh. Everything's good with the world constantly rotate around your model. It's super important you don't just want to look from a front view, look at the left, right, top, bottom, do all that fun stuff. So with the pinch brush, now that I'm kind of happy with this mouth shape, I can start to pinch that closed a little bit more. And then with a the scrape brush, I guess I thought that in Blender, flatten was kind of like H polish and ZBrush, but I really like the, the scrape brush a lot better. So I'm kind of making that a more of a flat surface. Once again, clay build up for that other eye. Carving that in, voxel remesh, carving it in. The important thing with voxel remesh, or dynamesh if you're in ZBrush, is that you don't want to lose all your detail, but you also don't want just a ton of polygons. That's not going to help you either. If you want to keep your sculpts smooth as possible, and mine's not super smooth right now, work, uh, work lower poly. And then eventually we'll use multi-res here in a little bit. Using draw sharp and then inflate, just break up the forms under the eye, give it the illusion that it's, you know, kind of rotten there, falling apart a little bit. The eyes to me really didn't pop, uh, at least on the left, so I needed to carve in just a little bit more. Using clay strips to continue pushing those forms to get something that I like, something that I'm happy with, and things are good. So using pinch brush, I can sharpen up those edges, give it a little more stylized look, and then pinch those creases a little bit better. 
So with the grab brush, I'm able to grab that bottom lip and just adjust ever so slightly, pull that up. Um, sometimes pinch will get you where you need to go and other times you can just move. Now, if I wanted to, I could have masked that topped portion uh, and then scooch it up, but I didn't. So at this point, you saw I added the multi-res modifier and I really, really like it. So it's been working great in Blender, this, uh, this version of Blender. Things are working really great and it's awesome. I didn't use any subtools, so this is all just a sphere. So if I had multiple subtools, the nice thing about the, the multi-res modifier is that it puts it at its lowest subdivision level whenever I'm not on that tool. So performance in mind, that's a good thing. Using draw sharp makes some of these lines, these cuts, and you'll see in part two that I actually do a little bit more procedural texture work, just get some more details in there. Using the blob brush, this was great. Holding control, I can do the opposite. So instead of pulling out, I'm carving in, making these nice rounded shapes. Kind of looks like mold or just, you know, rotten pumpkin flesh all over the place. I'm also gonna use the, the blob brush and flake brush here and there. Put in some of these like, uh, pumpkins have like little, they're not warts or pimples, but they look like that. Little uh, defects on the surface of the skin. So I'll go around and, and do that as well. Using the grab brush just to pull up that front of the lip just a little bit more, tighten up, tighten up the crease for the mouth and pinching the, the corners of the mouth too. So always rotating, always checking, zooming in, zooming out. Everything's looking good. So draw sharp. Like I said, I really wanted uh, those eyebrows to pop and before, before the draw sharp, it was kind of just blending in. So I can just do a couple cuts there. Things are good. Using the blob brush, paying attention to where I'm placing this. I'm trying to do little groups, so I can do groups of two, groups of three. Every now and then I can have a single wart just off on its own. Taking a look at the silhouette, so doing that on top, you know, helps break up the silhouette of the eyebrow, even though it's not sticking outside like a true silhouette of my character or my object here, whatever. Still, things are going pretty well. And then draw sharp. Just wanted to add a little bit of detail, like this was actually carved out. Um, so draw sharp is a great, great tool. Same thing, some of these warts, I had smoothed them down. So if I wanted to make them pop, I could use draw sharp around the bottom edge. Helps your, your skull pop for sure. Hitting that edge, just like uh, this pumpkin has some sort of uh, crust or like thickness to it. Not called crust, come on. And then... Taking a good look at that side profile. I didn't spend too much time looking at that, but I should have. Pulling out that lip a little better. Things are looking really, really nice. So this is the final result. This is part one. Be sure you stick around for part two where I hop into Keyshot.